So initially what I would do in this instance, I would turn on my pattern and I would have this running. So as you can see, there's, a, there's this pattern. Um, I'll start from scratch for a second and we'll look at how just real simply to build up a pattern. So we have our pattern on, our pattern section, so my sequencer is going to work. So I'll turn this on. And you will see as I'm cycling around, I have the little red LED. So I have my kick drum selected. I'm going to drop in four on the floor. And then I'm going to go to my hi-hats and I'll drop those on And we'll look for uh, a clap, and I'll drop that in on fives. So there's a very simple loop. But check it out. It's only 16, it's only 16, 16, uh, 16 beats, so it's only really one measure, because we're looking at this in 4-4 four, four time. What I did was I doubled up. Uh, so I want to increase my steps up to 32. And then in this case, we have 17 through 32. So I can select this, and it's basically going to double up, which will allow me to add a little variation to my drum loop, which I think is important. So we'll basically just reprogram the same thing and then go back and augment it with a, a little bit of variations. And then of course the clap, which is on 5 and 13. So when we listen to this, it'll sound exactly the same. So right onto the side in terms of edit steps, I'm either looking at 1 through 16 or 17 through 32. So what I'm going to do is just change up some of my kick. I'm going to add a kick right here on the 12th, and then on, actually no, I don't want to do that there, since I'm looking at, I want to do this on 1 through, 1 through 16, I'm going to add it on the 12th, and on 17 through 32, I'll add it on number 15. So I've got this little groove going on. I also added a bit of shuffle, which if I were to add some hi-hats, I would go through and create a pattern. So what I'm adjusting now is, you saw how I just drew in those 16th notes, now I'm adjusting the velocities. So I've got a soft and a and then a, and a little and a medium hit. So it gives it more of this funky feeling. Um, and then I adjusted the shuffle. So that's a straight 16. Now when I put the shuffle on, you hear it has that little bit of a, a funky groove to it, which is really cool. Um, so at this point, I'm sort of done with this drum loop. Um, typically, what I would do is copy this. I would hit Apple C, and then I would go to say a, a different a different pattern and hit Apple V. And then maybe on this one, I would do variations, like I would remove every other one. And that way I would have two, two different variations on, on the same drum loop. But we'll, we'll just keep with number four for right now. So I've got this pattern. Now, there's a function we can do, it's called copy pattern to track. It's similar to the one that's used on the Dr. Rex player. There's actually a dedicated button on the Dr. Rex player that uh, it will drop down all your Rex slices onto your arrangement page. Uh, I can do the same exact thing with my redrum. So I have my locator set up, and this is basically what it does. It's going to drop it between my locators. I have my redrum track selected. Uh, now I'm just going to right click with my mouse, or if you don't have a mouse, like if you're using a, a laptop, you just control and click, and you'll get your drop down list. This is the exact same menu that you would find if I went up under the edit menu. It's the same exact thing. So if I go up under edit, under, um, edit we're going to do copy pattern to track. And that is going to dump that little sequence I just did down onto my arrangement page. What's cool about this is I can now go in and see all of those, all of those notes that I've just plugged in. Let me turn off my controllers for a second. So there we can see all of the notes. And I can go in and edit those in greater detail if I need to, like doing drum rolls and fills, which is essentially what I've done as we've been building out the track. 